So we would go to the ceremonies with the royal people and all of that stuff. And we would go in as dancers. And we would have these really sharp swords. And the one time we went in and we cut heads. <gasps> like we went in and we just... Whoa, whoa. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. no wonder <laughs> I'm healing as a living, right? Because I'm correcting that murderous artistic weaponry and high people, leaders, like killing the leaders. All right, welcome to the New Age Human Podcast, where we have deep conversations about life, question the norm, all with the intent to thrive in the new age. I'm your host, John Astacio. And today we have a really cool guest. She is, let's see, she's a doctorate of consciousness studies. She's a licensed minister, internal family system subconscious specialist. Say that five times fast. Certified pranic healing instructor and healer. And she has her own series of 27 shows, The Way of the Spiritual Path. More like a spiritual warrior. Her name is Ursula Lentini. Did I say it right? Yes, you sure did. Sweet. Thanks for coming to the show. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. I'm really excited. We had a conversation about what to talk about. And you're like, well, we can talk about this list of stuff. And I'm like, ooh, I feel like I'm in a candy store. So the fruit that we chose today is pranic healing. And before we get into that, I know we went over like, all the things that you do, you do have a doctorate. It's Dr. Ursula Lentini. And um, I, w I know everybody would want to know, how did you get into that? Was this always the thing you wanted to do when you were a kid? Did you see stuff and you're like, uh, something's different? Like what, maybe, maybe it could be a red pill story of, of you waking up to the world being an amazing place instead of just what we're told on TV. Like what, what got you into this? This life. Uh, good question. Um, I've always been different and I just thought I was weird. You know, I didn't understand it was spiritual and my dad. So I, I, I have a consciousness of like, I can understand quantum already. Like my soul is evolved. So I, I dated a guy once he was older than me and they'd ask, how old is she? And he'd say, oh, she's 2000 years old. Like you don't have any idea. So I kind of <laughs> came in with, with, a uh, uh, higher awarenesses, you know, and my dad was not like me. So I would start talking and he wouldn't understand what I was saying. And he's like, girl, you better shut up. Like you just keep your mouth shut. You know, that's like, no one's going to understand you like shut up. And I'm like, I'm making perfect sense. You just don't understand me. So I that's did shut impressive. up. I kept it, I kept it quiet. Um, in the second grade, I had a spiritual experience. I was in church and like all the elements came together and experienced God. But when you're a kid, you're like, that was cool. You know, and you just keep moving <laughs> on and you don't really understand what's happening. And then the, the, the nuns, uh, you know, uh, Catholic grade school uniforms and the whole bit. And the principal pulled me out of class one day and was like, young lady, you're asking too many questions. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to learn. So, uh, <laughs> so she's like, you're disturbing the other children. I'm like, no, I'm not. They're, they're interested too. They just don't have the guts to ask. So and you're telling like, them stuff that you're seeing. Is that what's happening? No, I, um, it's, it's my perception is deep. Right. So I'm like, mm. wait a minute. What is this stuff about maculate conception? How does that really work? And you know, all that stuff. Mm. So I said, well, wh well, while you're here, you know, can I ask you some questions? And then. Uh, she got to a point where like, God works in mysterious ways. And I'm like, no, don't, don't lead me up this path and then drop me into the unknown. Mm -hmm. I want to know God. I want to know what is this thing, God? I want to know. And, uh, so I was really mad. So I went into the dark ages for four years and I was a hateful teenager. And then when I was 18, I moved to California and I explored every possible single thing about spirituality and an understanding of the spiritual world, because I know this 3D world is not all that there is. It's just too obvious to me. So I really have this drive and hunger, you know, what is this? And then over the years, I've explored many things and have come to the current understanding that I have now. Mm, so you, you didn't lessen until uh, you, you just, you're like, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. And, um, you are now because you, you're, you're here where you are now because you found answers. I am curious though, 
when you said that all the elements were coming at you in, uh, in, I think you said in church or when you were young, what do you, can you describe what that experience was? Was it like yes. weird stuff moving around? Like what did no, you experience? No, it was, it was the obvious, right? And then I understand now because after all this time, my nephew uh, had a, like a graduation and we went to this church and they had the smoke and you know, those, and I'm like, look what they're doing now. Look what they're doing now. Look, cause I do energy healing, pranic healing. So mm. I understand energetics, right? Mm. So you as a, a sound, right? Audio visual person, you know, things have to be a certain way in order to get the sweet spot of what we're trying to accomplish. That's what the churches do. So it was the lighting. It was the music. It was in the ceremony just after the communion. So I didn't have communion because it was too little, but you know, and, and it, it was like, everything came together and it was like that and then i think the sun because we would go to church at as school so i think the sun hit the mosaic gold flecked thing you know the big wall behind the altar and and it and it hit me and i just started becoming emotional and shaking and crying and well yeah wow so you you have a very like close to the chest experience of uh you had an emotional experience by being touched by the sun which is very interesting um but it just was, knowing it know. the sun was the you know like they try to do it in church right okay now we're going to mm -hmm. play the music now we're going to pray together now we're going to sing together because singing together unifies us mm -hmm. we're energetic beings we look like this but no we're energetic beings this is just the suit we're, we're wearing this time so if they can tune okay you know they say in a, and you go into a guitar store and you uh pluck d the other instruments will also vibrate in d mm -hmm. so when a church or an organization manipulates the energy in such a way that we're all in that same frequency that's unification that's a sense of oneness so when yeah. we meditate together, when we sing together, when we're in nature, when we own together, this is, this is getting us to the sense of oneness. Even if I go out in nature and I'm hanging there for hours, I'll be like, yeah, I am the trees. So that's what I experienced, that piece of oneness. But the, I would say that the sunlight was that thing that put me over the edge that the church tried to create and then the sunlight really made it all happen but it was a very sparkly uh sense of oneness that's pretty interesting i know that um just going hiking in the woods and sitting there and just you know you're you're hiking uphill and then you you, know, you just run out of breath and then you're forced you're forced to just stop and enjoy the scenery and you hear like each individual leaf moving and then you hear the water and it's like extremely relaxing it makes you want to record it, bring it home so you can go to sleep later on, you know? Totally. Um, and that's so, when... Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as um, pranic healing, I know you wanted to touch on that. Um, and I wanted to dive into that as well. You said, and I agree with this, and, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners agree with this, we are made up of energy. Um, how would How would you break that down? in layman terms because a lot of people think of energy as electricity right so in the fifth grade we all were taught everything is energy so there's air but e even though i can't see it with this eye because this eye wasn't designed to see all the molecules and everything floating around in this cubic space in front of me with instruments and so on th there's tons of particles and waves and all of that so if this table, this glass table is just concentrated molecules and it's so dense that it, it creates a resistance when I come upon it, then I can say, oh, I understand that this is energy, but I also experience it as a solid material. Mm -hmm. So there's the wave and the particle so when we go into quantum physics. Um, and when they're like, hmm, what is this thing called light? You know, the scientists and they're looking at it in their instruments. And it comes like a sound wave, right? So a slow sound wave like this is a low vibration and a high pitched one goes quickly. So those are sound waves and particles are concentration of energy. 
So we are mostly made up of water, 80%. Everybody pretty much agrees on that. Water is a conductor. Talk about electricity. Better not be standing in water during an electrical storm with your bare feet, mm -mm. right? Because immediately you will, that energy will conduct. So if I'm so mess, how could I be electrocuted with energy? Because that's a different kind of energy. So there's something inside of me that's the same as electricity. We're all frequencies. So, you know, you hug somebody and they're all like, oh, or you hug someone and they're like, oh, grandma. Yeah. So those two people have different frequencies, you could say, mm -hmm. and that's, that's how our energy. If I, how can I say that I am me, but this is my body? What if my arm gets chopped off? Am I not me? Am I less than me? No. What if I'm laying in my deathbed and my body's just not working? Am I still in there? And everybody has different personalities, right? So you can say, oh, that's the, that baby Ursula is just a little baby, but I come out and I show my personality. I'm more than my physical self. Mm -hmm. And then I've gone to past lives and future lives and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, dealt with ancestral healings. And this is what I do. I understand that the soul is consistent and the body is temporary so this lifetime i'm a female last time I, last time i was a black man last time i was a monk last time i was a nun you know so it's just we just change outfits just like days of the week now it's tuesday now it's wednesday so it's a the long same, day <laughs> same soul path but uh we we change different characters depending on in my belief, what we've chosen to come back as so we could learn lessons around those particular things. So if I was mm. a, a, an abusive man and I took advantage of my manhood, I'll come back as a female victim to be like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Oh, my God. And I there's movies on that stuff, too. And it's, it's extremely interesting how that can be what you're saying, something that's real. And then someone might have heard of the same story and made a movie out of it. And it's, it's somewhere in the subconscious of people that have no idea. It's just a thought that has an entertaining possibility. So that's pretty interesting. And it makes a lot of sense with the karmic path. You know, you do something bad and then now you're the victim of that situation so that you can at least see and receive the other side of it, unfortunately. And also Balance fortunately for you for because, learning. Yeah. Yeah. This, this experience that we're having is a dualistic reality there's always something opposite so and just like in nature it's always seeking a balance so if something's too much this way there's going to be a course correction so we can get to balance so that's why forgiveness is so important so you don't have to do the teeter-totter thing you can just go you know what let's not do that anymore so it's interesting because that um you mentioned healing with prana he, pranic healing and we we know that we're definitely made out of energy and there's a flow of energy and you're you're mentioning now that um our past lives and our decisions can carry over into this life and influence what we decide to do right now or what kind of life and and just perspective we're going to experience um can you briefly go into what you do or what the the goal is when you're trying to undisrupt that en energy or fix that like do you pretty much help someone learn a lesson now so that they can kind of move to the next level is there a different level if you if you've learned your lesson type of thing like what do you what are you mm, working good, good, good on question. to help heal yeah them? i'm going to answer that in a way that's um unexpected because when on the spiritual path we can go from having a a very taught experience, like a human 3D, like you need to do this, we'll get a job, you gotta be a man and have white picket fence and then have a mortgage for the rest <laughs> of your life. And you fight with your wife, that's the way it goes, right? And then you die, right? Like that's one model and it doesn't work and not too many people are happy in that model. So um, if we can, the, to me, the spiritual path is to understand like, oh, that's a taught agreement. Right. Cause if we went to another country down in Africa and the, you know, in the woods and all that, 
They're like, no, we don't do any of that white picket fence around here. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like everybody, yeah. children included, everybody has to pull their weight. Um, so when we can understand, uh, to me, on the spiritual path is to step back from the programs, the taught agreement, and say, oh, I'm not that, and I'm not that, and I'm not that, and I'm not that, and I'm not that. Then who am I? So then mm -hmm. it's to train the ego, oh, I'm nobody doing nothing, which the ego, hey, and then say, well, then why am I here? Mm. What, what good can I provide to myself and the world? And then we can say, okay, I, I have talents of here, here, and here. You have talents of asking interesting questions and you're like, I'm going to use my talent for the greater good. I'm going to help waken humanity up. Right. So now you're at that consciousness of, oh, I'm not this. I'm not this. I'm not this. Who am I? Then once we realize who we are, then we can say, oh, I'm here and I have, these are my gifts and talents and these are my burdens. These are my crosses to bear. These are my hangups. These are my issues. So I'm here and I'm working on my issues. Right. So then mm -hmm. as we understand, I have issues and these are my issues. Now I'm taking responsibility. And I can continually work on my issues and do prayer meditation, do service, you know, go to courses and, and do the things I need to do to become a more loving, kind person, to be a more natural human being. Interesting um, description of it, um, because I was thinking, all right, so you're going to do um, these yogic uh, exercises so that you can um, release the tension of energy. Um, and a lot of it is more of like an understanding of who you are and who you are not and what you're here to do with your gifts. And so I, I see what you, a lot of what you're doing is, um, uh, helping people figure out who they are or just their journey, right. Um, as that healing journey, which is interesting. Um, is there any, you mentioned past lives, right? And is there any weird past life that surprised you that was unexpected that you saw in yourself or someone else? Yes. It's funny because we're, we're saying we talked about pranic healing. Okay. I know, I know. I'm we like, I'm curious. We haven't talking about that yet, but we're having a great discussion, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, so so let me just say all of the stuff that I've said so far is more my take on everything and not pranic healing. So we haven't really talked about pranic healing yet because they don't talk about past lives. They don't talk about any of the stuff that we talk about. Oh, okay. So, um, yes, um, one of my past lives, I was a Asian swords dancer. So myself and another real person that I met in this lifetime uh, we, we both like dropped in and realized that's what we do. What? So we would go to the ceremonies with the royal people and all of that stuff. And we would go in as dancers and we would have these really sharp swords. And the one time we went in and we cut heads, like we went in <laughs> and, we just... and I was like, Whoa, no wonder Whoa. I'm healing as a living. <laughs> Right? Because I'm correcting that murderous artistic weaponry and high people, leaders, like killing the leaders. Wait, wait. So did you remember a scene of you were supposed to do a dance, but you started chopping heads instead? No, no, no. They thought, the enemies thought we were perf dance performers, but we were trained killers. Assassins. Assassins, yes. That is insane. Yes. Wow. And female okay. also. And f uh, yeah. So um, back then, I'm sure, unassuming and then chop, chop. Right. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's, let's go back to pranic healing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we definitely need to continue into uh, um, past lives because that is freaking awesome. We got to, are you down for um, an episode to focus on past lives? I sure. Think absolutely. Be down for that. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Well, th there you go. That was your preview, everybody. Um, so product healing, you know, if I had like a um, a sound effect, I'll do like the whole like re rewind, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, what did? How would you like to 
like what did you want to go over i know that you said disrupted energy there's laws of energy i like the idea of helping people understand what it is so if they're curious they can go into it because these are yes. tools this is what the future is going to be the future is going to be more people understanding that 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 we have these powers and it's not go to google all the time and wonder if you're going to die because you have a paper cut it's like you can heal yourself you know so yeah give it to us <laughs> <laughs> okay, so prana means life force energy. A lot of people are familiar with the word chi. So chi is Asia, prana is India, and in America we say life force energy. So it's that which gives us life. So I say whatever's beating our heart and breathing our lungs. So no matter how obnoxious ego can be, ego cannot beat our heart not one time. So it puts things in perspective, like I'm alive and my ego gets to experience this life because of an energy source that is coming through me that's designed every cell in my body, right? I didn't design mm -hmm. one single little thing, but I get to have the benefits of it. So just like everything is energy, we are in that frequency of aliveness. If you okay. believe in God, then you can say, oh, well, God gave me life. God keeps me alive. God this. I'm a metaphysician and I don't believe in God as a being. I believe in God as an intelligence. So we are soaking in a field of intelligence and I am that intelligence expressing as Ursula. You are that intelligence expressing as John. Mm. We haven't been taught that. We've been taught slavery, victim. You need someone who has to have power over you and you're the minion and all of that stuff. That's a model that is breaking up. We're moving into the age of Aquarian, Aquarius. And we all live in an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> I, my well, mind just went there. I'm like, we're all, we're going to breathe on the water. This is going to be pretty cool. Back, um, back to how we started, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're emerging from the water. So prana is using that specific energy. And it's teaching us. It's, it's reminding us. Because a lot of people, when I'm teaching, they're starting to start crying. And I'm like, yeah, you remember, don't you? And they're like, yeah, this is so weird. Um, mm. Because there's something inside of us that has a knowingness, like, of course, of course, wow. you know, how come this so simple thing wasn't taught to us properly? So in the energy body of our self, so there's a crown chakra that's like a, a cone, you know, like a funnel. Energy comes spiraling down to our central spiritual cord. And then like a float, it has holes and each hole has another chakra, another cone coming out. And in this teaching, it's an 11 chakra system compared to the seven chakra systems. I heard. Master Chokok Sui is the founder of this. He came in highly enlightened and studied and did so many things. And he made a synthesis of all the religions and the ancient text and then a lot of prayer and meditation, and he got information from the inner world and came up with a program called Pranic Healing. And it's a safe, effective way to heal ourselves and others because we're, we're now working in a quantum field and things can get kind of crazy. Hmm. So he's like, I need to make this simple. I need to make this safe because you can, you know, get into other realms that are not safe and you can pick up other people's diseases. So mm. people who are natural healers, that's their talents and traits. They will pick up the cancer of the person that, hey, great, and now, now they have it. So that is possible because everything is energy and things transfer, right? Just like if a child is crying and their mother hugs them and comforts them, the child feels the peace of the mother and all the, you know, woes go away. So that's a transference of energy. So in order to be a, a good healer, you need to have lots of protection and understanding of the laws and principles and do certain things. So you're on an output mode rather than a receptive mode. Mm, that reminds as, me of, um, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? As the healer. Oh, I was going to ask you, what are your thoughts on uh, bringing people to a hospital to recover next to someone else who's recovering and everybody else? You're just surrounded by people just either dying or trying to live. And as far as frequency goes, that is not a good place based off of what you're saying and based off of what I understand. It's not a good place to heal. And if anything, it's going to slow the process down. 
Um, I'm guessing you would agree with that. You have any? I, I might on try that? not to say everything <laughs> I want to say with that. Yes, 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 yes. So in, in pranic healing, energy, uh, heavy energy sinks low. Mm -hmm. Schools, public buildings, especially hospitals, they are constantly mopping. Mopping as mopping in... the floor, mopping right. the floor. Like you will not go to a hospital and not see a mop bucket or somebody mopping. Right, because it's constantly being clean and it's dirty. Right, because heavy negative energy sickness goes to the floor. They don't know that law, but they're but they're acting it out. Wait, so if everything is, so are you telling me that if everything in my home is like at a certain level or higher, I don't need to dust, I don't need to mop, everything is just going to disappear? Or is it more of like it, it holds on to things and, and things fall? Yes. Uh, so in my house, I have like a water bucket here. It's right over here with salt in it because salt absorbs negative energy. So I can program the salt because salt is an alive thing and it's made out of energy just like I am. So I can tell the salt something and then it will help keep my house clean. I can, I play ohms when I physically clean my house. So I have thoughts and feelings and like, oh, how am I going to make it through this day? And oh, you know, so those right. thoughts have frequencies and they're being deposited in my energy field that's collected in my dwelling. So mm. I'm cleaning my house like everybody else does, but I'm bringing in another dimension of it with the, with the owns in the salt bucket. And then my consciousness of like, don't think that that's not a good thought. So then I reverse that thought, <laughs> excuse me, by saying cancel, delete, you know, so it's these kinds of things that because I'm a human being, I'm having a human experience, you right. know, the whole deal goes, but I have more skills and tools than I did before. Oh, you just mentioned a lot of stuff. You're like, it, the interesting thing is it reminds me of um, those futuristic movies where people are the, the ones that I like. And I wish that, and I, I hope that we get to where it's the technology is more in us and the technology is more in earth. And so it may look like we went back in time, but the reality is you are literally, instead of um, using Alexa, you're using a, a, a container of water, but, but it's cleaning the house, which is nuts and it's free. Right. The cool thing is you get enlightened, you, this whole awakening process, you save a lot of money and you, and you end up living longer and you're happier. You know, yes. if, if there were a, lot of, um, a couple of selling points, <laughs> Exactly. But I'm like fascinated by that. Is there anything else you do at the home? Um, that yes, uses I have that type no of TV. I've not had a TV in my home for several years. I don't have clocks on the wall. I have a clock on my oven. And that's it. Um, I don't have, I have like those little plug covers on the, on the outlets mm -hmm. because electricity is coming in and that's, I don't need that. Yeah. So if you have mm. a little meter and you go over an outlet, they'll, it'll have a reading. So I have those little children, like don't stick a fork in here, kid covers. Yeah. Um, and I don't curse in here i don't have any violent stuff going on in here i have a very peaceful home so even servicemen like the cable company will come in they'll be like it feels really nice in here <laughs> you know like but they even get it they don't know they're like is it is it because she decorated a certain way so um i don't have sharp edges i have soft materials in here my any tables smelly are things glass and wood uh yeah i have a um because I have a cat, I have a, a little thing and it's got oils. So the oil uh, is fragrant in here, like the natural oils. So stuff yeah. like that. So there, it's little tweaks, right? And I don't have, I mean, I have a bit, my desk is, a, I'm a working person. So I, my desk is covered, but my home is usually very clean. My dishes are always washed, you know, very, very simple lifestyle. Very simple. Awesome. Awesome. Um. It, and for pranic healing, uh, you said there's laws of energy um, that you wanted to mention that maybe the audience would um, could maybe sink their teeth into knowing that there's more to us than 
um, you know, the skin and bones. And now they have this idea mentality that we're, we're energy. Um, what kind of laws were you talking about that maybe, mm -hmm. you We've know. mentioned them a few times, uh, like when the, the spiritual energy is coming in and going out. So if we know we're going to have a bad day, we can invoke. So invoke means to bring in. Evoke is to push out. So mm. I want to invoke. I want to know. I My ego, teeny weeny, and it needs to know that it is so small because it will ruin everything if it thinks it's in charge. So if I can keep my ego small by saying, you know what? We're asking for help. You are not in charge today. So I do a prayer. So whatever my belief system is, right? If I believe in my grandma, that's fine. You know, just bring the soul of your grandma in. If I believe in the entire universe, I'm going to bring my entire universe and be like, can you please help me today? And then this is, this is where. So then I'm like, okay, I'm a steward of this energy. I'm a representative of the best version of that I can be today. And I come from that kind of place. So any kind of problems that come in, I want to have an, an outflow of loving kindness, forgiveness, compassion, instead of like, oh, so-and-so is having a bad day and they put it on me and now I'm having a bad day. That's a law right. of energy. Emotions have energetic frequencies. So if I'm in a place of joy, that's bright and shiny and light and effervescent and contagious. But if I'm like, oh, the world's a terrible place and it's very scary around here. Look, my whole vibration just went down, 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 and I'm heavy and I feel heavy. Mm. And the lower we vibrate, darkness itself can kind of come in and parasitically suck our energy and hang out here. And you're like, oh, how come we just can't get out of this phone? Because you're not alone. You've invited yeah. friends through drugs and alcohol. So do you like not allow certain people in, or if they do come in, you have like a time limit, or do you have like a cleaning? Um, ritual that you do if someone negative comes and you're like, oh, come on. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm at the place where I don't attract negativity anymore. Mm. How about advice for someone that is just learning this now and then instead of shutting everybody off, um, working with what they got now, I, you know, any advice for them? Yes. The, the saying now is common. You can hear it. Hurt people, hurt people. Ooh. Yeah. Right? So yeah. idiots, jerks, they're like that for a reason. You know, you're not born a jerk. Yeah. Bad things have happened to them along the way, and they're angry, and they're mad, and they feel like they have to be defensive in life, and they feel like, I'm going to get you before you get me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we can see beyond that and say, oh... They must have had a really hard life. Oh, I bet there's a sweet teddy bear inside that got taken advantage of and fooled and tricked and beaten and who knows what. So when I see somebody really like, Rah, I think, oh, God. You know, I have deep compassion for them, for a human being to get that ugly. Mm -hmm. Ugly things must have happened. Yeah. So and I, I agree. If I'm looking at them through that eye, I'm not going to be offended by their obnoxious behavior. I'm going to be curious, like, what happened to that guy? Who was the last time somebody said, smile at that kind of person? And then if I smile at that kind of person, they get confused and they don't mess yes. with me. Yes. I've had that similar situation. And people say, you know, you get along with a lot of people. And um, I, I owe it to my mother saying something similar without going that deep where she said there's just a lot of people that are let's say sick or something happened to them that made them the way that they are and so it allowed me to separate them from their troubles them from their attitudes some people uh, and uh, it's horrible because a lot of people associate people with their attitude like they are mad it's like no they are experiencing mad because of what they experienced right yes. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I love the fact that you put it so eloquently and there's another person and there's more people out there that think that way because that's crucial right now. Really crucial. There's, there's a lot of people that have opposite opinions and um, people are just on the defensive. And the interesting thing is, like you said, 
you see them a little different, they're just thrown off. They came to a fight, but no one's no one showed up. And so what do you do? You just leave, yeah. you know? Yeah. Interesting. Well, um, what, um, what I want to do now is, uh, I know that we went over some product healing and, um, is there anything that you felt that we didn't go over that you wanted to go oh, over? Oh yeah. About 10 years of conversation, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and, trying and, not to say things. So, in I'm pranic just... healing. <laughs> yeah. So in pro... so the idea is in pranic healing. So if I'm, say one Maybe of my like... emotions, say I did get triggered, right? Some Something upset me. Say, say I ate some food that didn't agree with me. Just keep it simple. I can clear my energetic field. So in my solar plexus is where my emotions sit. So everyone's like, oh, my stomach. I have tummy troubles. You know, you see... They're, they're just an emotional person. So the little kid who has always tummy problems is they're, they're rotating their emotions through that part of their body. So as a pranic mm. healer, I can clear their whole energy field and then focus in on their little tummy problems and clear that uh, energetically, emotionally, physically, you know, and then that will calm down. So then the chi, their energy flow can pick up where uh, it's naturally supposed to be wow that's huge that mm -hmm. uh, reminds me of uh another story <laughs> no but um i i, I was a, i was a tummy kid and i was an emotional kid and um the irony is my wife keeps getting me to cry because i just it's just hard to get me to cry um what for whatever reason i you know i whatever i i maybe i cried it all out when i was a kid you looked at me weird i'm like you know um, but it, it was very interesting to know that I had a lot of digestive issues and then you were like, yeah, that's a, that's an emotional thing. And there could be people that continue to have it. Um, and that's like a cause, right? So it's very interesting. Like imagine like your friend come, comes over instead of like throwing up on you with all their baggage, you can just be like, all right, just hold on. I'm just going to clear this out really quick. All right, cool. You were just having this deal. Okay. So. What do you want to do today? I'm hungry. Like exactly. done. Exactly. Let's just go. Exactly. Cool. Um, I know we're going to come back. So I want to give you a chance to, I mean, is there anything that you're working on right now? I know you have uh, uh, your, uh, like uh, your own series, The Way of the Spiritual Path. You're doing a lot of stuff. Is there anything that you wanted to mention to people that if they wanted to know more about pranic healing and how you can help them, how they can reach you, um, what, you know, how can people find you? Yeah, I definitely would like to invite everybody to the Twin Hearts Meditation. So Master Cho Kuk Sui, who put Prana Killing together, he's the founder, also gave this beautiful little 21-minute meditation that we bless the planet with loving kindness. And in doing that, remember I told you about the crown chakra and the energy coming through. So our objective is to be of service to the planet. The energy comes down to, to project out, but guess what? It's clearing us before we project it out. So if I said, hey, come and get, you know, do some energy clearing on yourself, people are like, oh, I'm too busy. But if I'm like, the planet needs you, you know, come. And they're like, yeah, the planet needs me. I'll, I'll, I'll contribute. So it's like, he's so smart. Like he knows the motivation yeah. of people. So you would think opposite, right? Because we're to typically selfish. But if you're like, hey, we need some help here, then people are like, yeah, let me pitch in. Uh, wow. So I do that online or in person. I'm in Atlanta, but I, uh, online for sure every Tuesday at seven o'clock. And you just log on. I'll explain everything. You don't have to wear yoga pants. You sit in a chair. I mean, it's very simple and you'll feel a difference. And people have done no changes in their life, but only added the Twin Hearts meditation. And other people have noticed changes within them and have commented like you're different. Something's different about you. And so that's evidence, you know, like we want evidence-based everything. That's evidence right there. So if people want to try it, it's donation-based. It's very simple. You just show up and, and uh, follow along. I invite them to do that. And then also if people want, feel like I need to talk to her, I have free, you know, uh, get on my website and you can book a free session with me in 20 minutes and we'll just figure out what's going on and how I can help. Um... Other projects, I'm working on a documentary right now. Uh, you Are Not Alone, Rites of Passage for Young Adults and Their Parents. Because in this pandemic, we've been 
made to stay at home and it is natural and normal because we're animals, you know, amongst everything else, we're also an animal. It is in our animal progression, it is normal and natural for the young people to go out, to leave their parents' domain and rules and regulations and to explore their identity and to connect with other young people. And that's not happening. So it's stunting their growth emotionally, socially, physically, and self-identity. So they don't really know who they are. And there's a lot of tension because the parents are like, I wish you would just leave, you know, but there's nowhere for them to go. They don't have support and money and all of that stuff. I just saw an article of 48% of young adults are still living at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a problem. So I made a documentary about that and how can we change our relationships even though we're locked in that situation. Wow. I, I look forward to seeing that and hearing about its uh, completion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for all, everything that you're doing. Um, I'm excited for our future conversations. And um, I'm after this, I'm going to get a bucket, fill it up with um, some salt. And, but you uh, don't know the magic <laughs> words, what to say. And I Is can't there... teach you. I can't teach uh, you. Uh, okay, okay. We can work on that. We can work on that. Okay. All right. So <laughs> you can take the class. I teach the class twice a year. Yeah. Ooh, people okay. fly in and come take the class. It's an in-person only class. Ooh, very interesting. Or okay. they could find other teachers in their area too. Mm, okay. Okay. And learn how to take care of themselves and others. Master Choa said that he, his goal is to have a pranic healer in every family, every house. That would be fantastic. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they will replace uh, WebMD. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for hopping on. Um, we will uh, continue this and, and into other conversations in the near future. Thanks again for hopping thank on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you making this platform so that other people who are looking, really people hungry, hungry for this kind of information. So thank you for your service.